Welcome everybody to another professional learning session. As you all know, it's very important since we have many English language learners in our district that we really focus on what LPAC is and how can we support it in our classrooms. During this session, I will be going over some of the handouts and some of the resources that I have provided for you in order for you to be prepared when we unpack our LPAC task types. This is aligned to school growth goal number three in the school growth plan. And this school growth says that we are going to try to increase our reclassification by 10% at our school site. And we're going to do it by um, learning all the English learner strategies and promoting a trusting work environment. So during this session, we will be taking our overview of our journey with LPAC. We're going to review LPAC task types. We're going to unpack and summarize and academic presentation. We're going to review other LPAC task types. So we right now in the California ELD standards, we are on, in the transition phase. We are trying to concentrate on building foundational resources so that we are better able to support our students here in Greenfield. As many of you know, um, LPAC has changed from what we used to test, which was CELT. Uh, our journey started off when we um, changed from CELT at the end of the year last year when we did our CELT retest. Now we are actually in our LPAC summative. We tested from February to May, and we will be doing an initial LPAC testing as well. So CELT is basically not in operation anymore. We will only be doing LPAC, and that is why it is critical that as educators we understand what to do with LPAC. The LPAC summative, again, um, began February 1st, ended May 31st. So now we have our scores. Um, now we just need to learn a little bit more about how, how it's assessed. So it is assessed with through the, the different formats um, and different domains. So we're going to be looking at the reading, writing, speaking, and listening. As you all know, the LPAC general performance levels also have changed. Before with CELT, we used to have five performance levels, and now we only have four. And so that is going to be a change for us in the next coming uh, months that we need to learn. Um, in LPAC, a four means that it's at the bridging proficiency level. A three means that it's an expanding level and the early, early bridging level. Um, also, the two is the expanding level, and the one is an emerging level. The LPAC performance levels also have changed the way we are going to be um, reclassifying. If you look at the top three scores, the overall scale score, the oral language score, and the written language scale score, those will be used for reclassification. The four bottom scores will be used for supporting the domains. And this is where we will need to unpack our standards to make sure that we are addressing the four domains and making sure that we do it in a, in a way where our students get the most benefit. So what's new with the LPAC? We know that we have to be doing integrated and designated ELD. That's um, in the state of California using our ELD standards for both integrated and designated. We know integrated ELD happens all day long, while designated ELD happens for a targeted time during our day. So CELT used to have adapted tasks, and now LPAC has changed. And LPAC ha actually has integrated task types. So um, if you read what CELT used to have, the tests for CELT used to be named one way. And now if you look at the ones for LPAC, you'll, start, you'll see that there's a little bit of a difference in them. So what does non-integrated versus integrated mean? So non-integrated only requires the use of one domain at a time. For example, just listening or speaking, reading or writing. Well, integrated means that you use two. Um, for example, the listening or the reading passage to generate a spoken or written response. So you're integrating two task types to get one score. Some of the integrated skills tasks are listening and reading, reading and speaking, writing and reading, writing and listening. So this was a non-integrated task before. Label a picture was write a sentence that tells what is happening in the picture. So you just write a simple sentence. 
It's a non-integrated test type. Um, why did they change that? Because educators wanted a writing test that elicited sentence level writing, targeted collaborative writing skills, targeted ELD skills, standards, and the second part, which is a lot of the um, grammar, and it reflected classroom instructional practice. So what was the result? Label a picture became describe a picture. So for example now, an integrated task is correct an error within peer writing. So somebody writes, somebody writes something or they get a written passage and the student corrects it, or you expand a sentence, modify a sentence, or you combine sentences for the writing section. So other examples of integrated tasks, listen to a story, then retell it, read information in a graphic organizer, then write about it. So here are some of the integrated task types. For the purposes of today, we'll be focusing on summarizing academic presentation for the speaking and the listening. Other task types, as you may read, there's others also that have changed. So looking at summarizing academic presentation, we're going to be looking at this one because K through 12th grade has it. Although it is not one of the main or the, one, the heavyweight standards in ELD, it is a new kind of um, skill that students need to learn, and so do teachers. So what happens here? The test taker summarizes a presentation for a classmate who was not present. What is the stimulus? A teacher gives a slideshow about an academic topic. Each set has one to two slides. Um, the test taker is prompted to retell the main points of the presentation with the help of the visuals that were provided during the presentation. And the response, the test taker uses information from the presentation to retell the main points of the presentation. Here are some ideas. This is the actual test from the practice book that the state has provided for us. So there's three pictures. The test giver actually is saying something. Here's what they say. And as they say it, somebody is pointing to the numbers as they are reading what happens in each picture. And if you notice, most of this is science-based. And it's about a minute and a half that students um, are sitting there listening to it. Here is the rubric. Okay, you can see rubric from zero to four. Pretty much a zero is no response, and a four is a full response that includes main points. Good grammar, good pronunciation, speech is smooth and sustained. So what does it look like in our science? So this is from our science stem scopes. We pulled out some pictures um, from a video. We also um, wanted to let you know that note taking will be very important and maybe providing some scaffolds for our students with um, sentence frames like the ones you see here. And if you need more information on stem scopes, we have the link that you can access. So here's another one where students can use a picture and you can um, tell them what um, this, this picture is about and then they can go back also and they can provide a summary for you. So our benchmark also provides, so this is all comes from our um, language arts and our science and this is what it provides for our students. It provides videos, graphics and visuals, text supported by illustrations and all of this is science based and it is also informational text in our language arts. So what I would like for you to do on your own is I would like for you to take some time. You're going to choose one of the integrated skills tasks to discuss with a partner. If you have a partner or, or just by yourself, you're going to read the task description and you're going to ask yourself, what are some challenges of the task type? Now we're focusing on summarizing academic presentation, the one I just went over. How does it align or not with instruction that is currently happening in your integrated ELD? And number five, how does it align with instruction and designated ELD? You will bring that back when we have our face-to-face -face, um, professional learning session. Here are some other reflective questions that I want you to consider. What are some of the potential benefits of integrated task types? What are some of the challenges? And um, to what extent is designated ELD and integrated ELD instruction in your program aligned? And how will you continue to align curriculum, instruction, and assessment in your grade level? I have also provided for you um, LPAC resources. Some of these resources are the practice tests that students will use. You can look at your grade levels. Um, we also have domain sheets for writing, for the writing, speaking, listening, and reading. We have fact sheets in Spanish and in English. 
Um, we also have LPAC instructional supports. We also have videos in here for you that you may look at and that um, you may also go to LPAC.org. In LPAC.org, you will find um, a video for yourself to learn a little bit more about LPAC. So right here, this is what we will be doing in our learning session. This is unpacking the LPAC tasks. We'll be looking to see what the LPAC task type for summarizing academic presentation um, requires. You're going to be doing the speaking, and this is just a little preview of what we, we will be doing on that day. So you can see um, the actual unpacking the LPAC task type handout, and it will be included in your packet today so that you're able to see it. Um, another item that we will be focused on, and I have the agenda here for you so that you're able to see it. We will be doing um, reviewing the task type, embedding the task type, and we will have a closing routine and reflection. So this is our agenda. It also will be part of your um, handouts. So thank you so much for joining us today for this professional learning session. I hope that um, this has been very informative. Remember to um, look at your handouts. I will be providing several handouts for you. Uh, make sure that you watch the videos and make sure that you go over the PowerPoint again. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. Have a wonderful day.